Many couples end up heading towards divorce, not even understanding that's the direction they're going in. And then one of them becomes surprised when the other one looks at them and says, you know what? I'm done with this relationship. So in this video, I want to discuss a concept that psychologist John Gottman calls failure to attune and give you five steps that couples often take when they stop attuning and they start moving towards divorce. That's today on Relation Shots. Hey, welcome to Relation Shots. If this is your first time hanging out with us, don't forget to download your free guide to intimacy. You'll see a link in the description area below. If we can help you in any area of your relationship, you'll see a ton of resources listed below. If communication is an area that you continue to struggle on in your relationship, you might think about joining my free live masterclass I'm doing right now on the three M's of communication that will help you identify what you're doing wrong and how to improve your communication. You'll see a link for that below as well. All right, so what I wanna talk about today is this idea of attunement. And psychologist John Gottman describes attunement as the desire or ability to understand and get into your partner's inner world. And so when couples stop attuning to one another, they stop understanding that, they stop connecting, they inevitably end up going down a path towards greater disconnection, greater conflict, and that cycle keeps them stuck and oftentimes leads to divorce. So John Gottman has identified five steps that often lead a couple towards divorce, disconnection, continued conflict, when attunement is missing, and I wanna give you those five steps so that you can recognize them in your relationship and turn things around before it's too late. Step number one is what he calls a sliding door moment. And it's simply this, every couple, every day, both of them are making bids to connect with one another. Maybe something simple like, hey, can you grab me a drink? It may be something a little deeper like I need you. But every day we're making attempts or bids to connect with one another. And when one spouse makes a bid for connection, John Gottman calls that a sliding door moment. And the other spouse has two options. They can slide the door open and step into that bid and connect with their spouse or they can slide the door closed and they can turn away from their spouse. Now, one closed door or one miss on this is not gonna destroy a relationship, but over time, if one spouse feels like the other continually and consistently is sliding the door closed when there's bids for connection instead of sliding open, stepping into it, you do begin to increase the disconnection in a relationship, which then leads to step number two that he calls a regrettable incident. And so what happens is this, there's a sliding door moment, someone makes a bid, the other spouse closes the door and turns away, and you may notice that your spouse has got a look on their face like they're upset, or maybe their behavior, or maybe they're even telling you that you're upset, and in that moment, you now have the opportunity to turn back towards them, maybe apologize, make amends, but repair the fracture that's been there. And if you do that, there's attunement again in the relationship. If you don't do that, what often ensues is what he calls a regrettable incident. And that's a conflict that escalates. Things are said that end up hurting the relationship. Conflict is created in the relationship. And guess what? More disconnection happens because of this regrettable incident. Step number three is what he calls the Zygernik effect kicking in. And so this is after a psychologist, Bluma Zygernik, and what he recognized was in a Vienna restaurant, he was watching these waiters take super complicated orders without writing them down and deliver those orders. And he's like, man, that's amazing these people can remember that. But when he would ask them 10 minutes after the order was delivered, could you recite the order? What he found is they couldn't even remember it anymore. And so what psychology and research has shown is that our brains have a tendency to forget things that have kind of concluded or been closed down, but we continue to remember things that get lodged in our memory when there is no ending to it, when they are not closed, when they are not delivered upon. So let's take that into a relationship. Here's what happens in a lot of couples relationship. When there is a regrettable incident and one of them make amends, uh, maybe apologizes and does whatever is needed to repair the breach, couples tend to consider that closed and they end up forgetting those incidents. But the unresolved conflicts, the ones that have yet to be closed, the ones that are still out here lingering, couples tend to remember those at a disproportionate amount. And so what happens in a relationship is when you have lots of little either sliding door moments that 
the door was closed and you weren't connected or regrettable incidences where conflict escalated and things were said and disconnection and pain and hurt and frustration entered. And when those were not resolved or repaired, they tend to be ruminated on by one or both spouses over and over and over again. And at some point, all you can remember in the relationship are all the things that have yet to been resolved while at the same time forgetting, hey, we actually have made a lot of progress in a lot of areas and have resolved some stuff. And you get this lopsided view of the relationship, which then leads to step number four, which is negative sentiment override. And that simply means that you now view everything in the relationship through a negative lens. And research has shown when somebody gets to the place of having negative sentiment override, what often happens is they view neutral and even positive statements in a negative light now. And some research has shown that when somebody is stuck in negative sentiment override, they tend to see 50% of their spouse's neutral and positive statements or actions as actually negative, right? This is where your spouse says something like, oh man, the light bulb burned out again. And in your internal dialogue, you are already coming back with things like, oh, am I the official light changer? You can't change that light yourself. And it's like, they were just making a neutral statement. And you took it as some demand on you to fix it or whatever, or your spouse, you know, tells you, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and cook dinner tonight, and that's not something they normally do. And so instead of appreciating the positive act, you're like, ah, what's behind this? Are they trying to get something out of me? Are they trying to make me look bad because their family's in town? Are they trying to make themselves look good? And at some point, when you've gotten to negative sentiment override, it doesn't matter what your spouse does. You're gonna find something negative about it. And when you find something negative about it, you're gonna go in, it's gonna cause more conflict and more disconnection in the relationship. And when that happens over time, step number five comes in. And this is where John Gottman says the four horsemen show up, which are contempt, criticism, stonewalling, and defensiveness. And when those things become a regular in the relationship, you are now headed on a path that you may not be able to turn back from. And so I've done other videos on those four. I'm not gonna cover them here, but those are five steps that couples who are failing to attune to each other, failing to get in each other's worlds, failing to have the kind of conversations that keep connection in a relationship, that make us feel like we know our spouse, that allow us to feel like we can trust our spouse because we know them and we're connected to them. And when that failure to attune happens, you start walking down these five steps. And when you get to step number five, and when contempt shows up in a relationship and it shows up regularly, you are probably on a path to divorce and you need to get some help. So hopefully these steps uh, are helpful to, to allow you to recognize what may be going on in your relationship, where you're failing to attune. And if you recognize yourself on the path here in any of these steps, it's time to do something different. It's time to maybe get some outside help. It's time to maybe prioritize a little more intentionality in your relationship around connection, having conversations to both resolve issues and maintain the connection in the relationship so you don't end up at step number five, looking through the lens of divorce and wondering how you got there. So I'd love to hear your comments in the comment section below. Maybe you have some thoughts on this. Maybe you've experienced some of these steps in your relationship. Let's chat about that. And I'll see you right back here next time on Relationships.